Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Alicia. Welcome to the family. Today we're going to be going over the books that I have on hold on the Libby app. During my February TBR video, I did let y'all know that I constantly have books cycling through Libby. And a lot of the times the books that I'm reading are the ones that become available. And so I did ask you in that video if you wanted to know what books I currently have on hold on Libby. And a lot of you said yes. So today we're going to be going over a few of them just to let y'all know what I'll be reading in the future. I do have quite a lot of them. So we'll only be talking about 10 to 12 books today. And these are are the books that will become available soon within the next two to six weeks there's others on here that have estimated hold times of like 16 to 20 weeks so we'll talk about those during another video so without any further ado let's get right into it So I thought we'd start by talking about the book that I'm currently listening to on Libby and that is When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole I do believe this is Alyssa Cole's first time writing a thriller. She is primarily a romance author, if I'm not mistaken. So, When No One Is Watching is a literary thriller from what I've heard. Um, I'm only about 20-ish percent in, but this book primarily deals with gentrification and the effects of gentrification. We do follow a dual perspective. In our first perspective, we follow Sydney, who was born and raised in Brooklyn, and that's where her roots are, her community, her family, and she sees her neighborhood being gentrified and everybody that she grew up with being pushed out and moving to the suburbs. The other perspective that we follow is actually from one of the newcomers. He's this white dude named Theo and because of certain circumstances, Theo and Sydney end up being paired up to do these walking tours. But as they start to uncover more of the history of Brooklyn, they start to notice that maybe some of the residents that were pushed out aren't going to the suburbs and that they may potentially be missing. So there's definitely a mystery thriller aspect to the book. So far, we're still getting to know the community and the neighborhood and we're seeing the changes happening. Only 20% through, but I'm really enjoying it so far. The next book that I have on my shelf is Pet by Awaki Imezi, and I believe this is a YA fantasy book. It's one that is very short, but I've heard reads really fast and it's really impactful. And basically in this world, there's no more monsters. Monsters just don't exist. But monsters that did exist in this world before aren't your typical monsters that you think about. It's more like racism and police violence. And so in this world, we follow our main character, Jam, who one day sees this weird looking creature come out of her mom's painting. And this creature's name is Pet. And Pet lets Jam know that the reason that they've come is to fight off a monster that is loose in her city. And from there on, they go on this quest to find it. I just thought this book sounded so cool and I heard that it has great representation. Our main character, Jam, is a selective, nonverbal, black trans girl, so... I don't know, it just sounds really cool and I'm excited to get to it. I will be starting that one right after when no one is watching because I actually have it already. So the next book that I have on hold is Riot Baby and this is by Tochi Anyebochi. And this is a genre bending book from what I read. It's speculative fiction, fantasy, sci-fi somewhere along those lines and this one is one that tries to grapple what it means to grow up black in america especially from a male perspective and this idea of being born a crime because you are black and in it we follow two siblings kev and his sister so kev was actually born the day of the la riots of 1992 which were spurred by the beating of rodney king and then the subsequent acquittal of the police officers who beat him and he ends up going to jail for being black and his sister basically uh, tries to get him out uh, from what i understand about the book but there's also some fantastical elements that are thrown in there so I'm just really curious to see where the book is going to take us and how we're going to navigate these complex issues. The next book that I have on hold is The Patient by Jasper DeWitt. And I put this one on hold because Savannah from Ribbing Reads talked about it and I just had to pick it up. And this one kind of has the silent patient vibes and I loved the silent patient. So in this one, we follow a psychiatrist who is new to an asylum and he basically undertakes the task to cure this very eccentric patient. There's no diagnosis for this patient and every other psychiatrist that has tried to treat him has end up falling into madness or they end up 
committing suicide and so the story goes on from there i don't really want to know much else about it because i don't really like knowing anything about thrillers that i go into i really like to know as little as possible that's just the way that i like it next book that i have on hold is called entangled life and this is by merlin sheldrake this is a non-fiction science slash nature book and this book basically talks about mushrooms i just think that's so cool i love mushrooms i love how versatile they are i love how they build like massive networks underneath the ground and how they're able to basically control animal behavior by letting off like certain they're not pheromones i don't know what they call but they like release chemicals into the air that basically are able to change animal behavior i just think that fungi are super cool and ever since i moved to the pacific northwest and i go hiking i see them all the time they come in all different shapes all different sizes all different colors and i'm just really excited to learn more about them okay the next book that i have on hold is called split tooth and this is by tanya tagok i know very little about this book i believe this is another genre bending book and i know that it's an own voices and it's set in canada i i really don't know the plot for this one whatsoever i just kept hearing that it's unflinching and it's very magical and it's one of those that will leave you feeling tender i like those kinds of books the next book that i have on hold is behold the dreamers and this is by imbalo mumboy i think this is a contemporary literary fiction book and in it we follow john day who was our main character and he's a cameroonian immigrant who came over with this family to provide them with a better life he ends up getting employed by this senior executive of this really prestigious firm and things are going well for their family but then there's a financial crash in this firm kind of gets towed under that and because of this him and his family have to make some really difficult and hard choices so it just sounds like it's going to be a book that it's very impactful and one that is going to be very relevant to our current times here in the united states it definitely deals with the topic of immigration i'm really excited to read this i love hard-hitting books i love books that analyze current events the next book that i have on hold is red rising by pierce brown this is the first book to a sci-fi fantasy series and i have no idea what the series is about the only thing i know about this book is that people either love it or hate it i haven't heard of people just being okay with it people really like it or they really dislike it so i'm curious to find out which camp i'm going to be a part of before i tell you about the next book that i have on hold i swear i thought i outgrew my vampire phase but i guess i haven't i just i really haven't <laughs> so i ended up picking up this book one because of the author i love this author but also because it's about vampires and this one is certain dark things and this is a neo-noir reimagining of vampire lore like doesn't that just sound freaking fantastic i think it does and then we follow our main character who is called domingo and he's basically a kid who's living on the streets and you know just trying to survive domingo ends up meeting atla who is a descendant of aztec blood drinkers atla is trying to escape this narco vampire clan and domingo gets pulled into all of that mess doesn't that plot just sound super cool and super fun i can't wait till i get it it sounds like it's going to be a wild ride the next book that i have on hold is one that i don't really think i need to talk about it's been making its rounds around booktube and it's a really popular book i just tend to not read from this genre as much so i never picked it up and you know i'm still trying to find my niche within the romance genre i'm trying to find what works for me and this might this is get a life chloe brown by talia hibbert this might be the romance book that finally gets me into romance it's not like i have an aversion to romance i just every book that i read in romance i don't love i don't hate them i just don't love them the one time that i loved a romance was in the infernal devices that whole love triangle between will tessa and jem i love that so if you have any recommendations for romance that is similar to that let me know especially if they're diverse romance so the next book that i have on hold on libby is called the sanatorium by sarah pierce and this one sounds really interesting. So in this one, we follow a detective who is celebrating her brother's engagement. For her brother's engagement, they end up going to this former converted sanatorium that's now like a five-star minimalist hotel, but it's set in the Swiss Alps and it's away from everything, so it's really secluded. And his brother's fiance ends up going missing. And the more she 
searches for her, the more she starts to think maybe the hotel is haunted. So I just thought that this was really, really cool. It's like mystery thriller-esque. It sounds really awesome. We're almost done, just two more. So the next book that I have on hold is Lakewood by Megan Gidden. And this is another genre bending book. You see a trend here. I love genre bending books, especially the ones that have like thriller and sci-fi horror vibes. I love those. So this one was described to me as part Handmaid's Tale, part The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. It has to do with medical experimentation. It has to do with ethical lines being crossed. It also takes a look at class and race and moral dilemma. And you know me, I love me some thought-provoking books. I love me some books that talk about race and class and books that talk about decolonizing your mind. So I feel like this book is going to be perfect for me. From some, from the few reviews that I've read, it has creepy vibes. I really, really, really want to read it. So I know I said there was only one more, but it's actually two, but I'm just going to talk about them together. So I have Nemesis Games and Babylon's Ashes on hold, and this is going to be books five and six of The Expanse. So you may ask, has Alicia read Abaddon's Gate? No, she has not. Okay, but listen to me. I only have Abaddon's Gate and Cibola Burn, and then after that, I don't have the rest of the Expanse books, and I'm on a book buying ban, so I had to put these on hold, and you know what? It's fine. It's like another 13 weeks until I get them. In the meantime, I'm going to read books three and four that I do own, so then when I'm done with those, I can start these automatically because... I am trying to finish the Expand series before Leviathan Falls comes out. We're gonna do it, we're gonna do it. We're gonna finish the Expanse this year. It's going to happen. So those are all the books that I have on hold on Libby. Let me know if you enjoyed this video. I can keep doing these quarterly because I do cycle through books on Libby. If you've made it to the end, leave a fire emoji down below in the comments and I will see you on the next one. Bye.